championship, dog. Hell yeah. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing silver with purple trim. He weighed in at an official 127 and one half pounds. Oh, I love my big brother, and that's why he's a big brother there for me. He's paying for it, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. Look at that. Fighting out of Salt Lake City, Utah, Jose Pepito Aro. Life. The fight that starts the moment we're born. For some, the fight is about the cars we drive or the numbers in our bank accounts. But for others, the fight is about more than that. It's about the fight to live, the fight to push past failure, the fight to achieve the impossible. We're born with a fire inside us that drives us to fight. Fight to love, fight to dream, fight for a better tomorrow. And we're never in the fight alone. How hard will you fight to reach your dreams? Will you wrap the gloves tight and swing with all your might? Or will you walk away defeated when the fight gets hard? But we all know the heart of a champion never gives up. I'm doing well just getting ready for this fight. A little nervous since I haven't fought for a whole year, but you know, it is what it is, it's time to shine. My name is Jose Pepito Haro. I was born in Yakima, Washington. I'm a professional boxer. I currently live in Salt Lake City, Utah. My dad got me involved in boxing at the age of 12. He felt that I was getting in trouble, so he decided to put me in the boxing gym. And thanks to my dad, it, it has helped me a lot. If it wasn't for boxing, I could have easily been somewhere else. The time that you're in the gym training, you could easily be with your friends doing some stuff you're not supposed to be doing. So that's why I say boxing does save lives. The reason I continue to fight, that's something I love to do and that's my passion and I feel like I'm gonna become the world champion and I wanna be a good role model for my kids. The way I felt stepping in the ring for the first time, it actually felt great. It wasn't like any other sport. With boxing, it's not a team sport. It's actually all you. So when you win, you won that fight because of you. And you know, your heart, your skills, all that hard work you put in that gym, you know, it pays off in that ring. The bottom line is everything comes down to you, your desire to win. First time I fought, I was really nervous. I kept telling myself, why am I doing this? I mean, is this even for me? And once I got in there and I won, I knew I wanted to do this for the rest of my life. So I hate this feeling. When I had my first professional fight, it was the same thing. I was really, really nervous. Before the fight, I had to use the bathroom multiple times. I don't know what it is. I just, you're always nervous 24 seven when you have a fight coming up. You never know what's gonna happen. You might get clipped, you might get knocked out. I mean, you might get hit with a punch. You might be different for the rest of your life. And that's why I pray every, every time I fight for God to protect both of us. I like to call myself a box puncher. A box puncher is more like you can box, you can also knock guys out. But I also, if I have to bang with these guys, I'll bang with them just to show them that I can do that with them too. But I also like to give the people what they want to see. Don't punch, stay there. Fairy fighters going up, I used to like watching Ricardo Lopez, Juan Manuel Marquez, Oscar de la Hoya, Julio Cesar Chavez, and Miguel Cotto. I love Chavez just for the fact that he went to the body. He never got impatient in there. He just, he kept going to the body until he broke you down. He never gave up. De la Hoya, I always loved his hug. Same thing with Miguel Cotto, I loved his hug. And the thing about, about Marquez was, that, that guy, when he throws six punches, or if he throws two or four, he's gonna make sure he lands those punches. What I took from Marquez was, I told myself, if I'm gonna throw six punches, I'm gonna land those six punches. If I'm gonna throw those two, I'm gonna land those two. What I took from Chavez was his liver shot, you know, his left hook to the body. Um, I, I loved his hook. What I took from Miguel was his hook upstairs. It's actually his hook downstairs and follow up upstairs. That's what I took from Miguel Cotto. 
I love the way he fights, he's still fighting. So I'll have a total of 13 professional fights, 11 wins with one loss, one draw, and six knockouts. I haven't fought for a whole year in Atlantic City. I took that fight in a week notice, and once you leave your state, it's really hard to win those fights. So I took that chance, so I left my state to go fight him out there. I knew the consequences. If I went to decision, I knew I wasn't gonna win, but I had to take that chance. I took that loss, it was a competitive fight. About three months later, I get another car, go fight another guy in Atlantic City, and I got a draw. I'm glad I took both those fights just because I got that experience. I went eight more months without fighting just because it was really hard for me to get fights, just for the fact that a lot of fighters don't want to take that risk. I got another offer to fight in California. Once again, once you leave your state, it's really hard to win those fights. But I took this fight, he came in probably like over, I think 15 pounds overweight. We still fought and um, I actually won that fight. Winning that fight just opened up bigger doors for me. I've learned about these, uh, all these type of fighters. It's, uh, everybody has different styles. Let's say both of these fighters are both aggressive, but they're still different fighters. Everybody thinks differently. I've been learning a lot from these type of fights just because I've been going the distance with these guys. It's uh, preparing me to become a champion just for the fact that every fight you have to train harder and harder. You can't ever take a, a day off in training. Just these fights right here, um, a lot of these guys that I have fought, they have fought for titles already. I'm not afraid to lose. This is why I take these fights. I take the risk. I, I leave my stay. I go fight these other fighters in their states. I just want, once I leave boxing, I want to say I fought the best and I wasn't scared of nobody. For me to fight these guys and be with them, that shows me where I'm at. And the way that I've been beating these guys, I know I'm going to become a world champion. Right now, West Valley police are searching for a man who shot another man tonight in a Walmart parking lot. Officers say the man again got into a fight inside the store. The argument spilled out into the parking lot, got physical, then one man pulled out a gun and opened fire. The victim was hit in both feet, but is expected to be okay. I was doing some shopping at a grocery store. There was just some guy that was actually Personally, to me, he looked like he was high on something. Uh, he was drugged just by his body language, but at the same time, it looked like he just wanted to start something. Plus, look at me, I'm small, you know, I'm, I'm, I have a baby face. This guy just picking on me, you know, he's just a bully. Uh, he followed me all the way to my car from the grocery store, and uh, next thing I know, uh, he shoots me in the feet, but I really didn't know what shot in the feet. I felt the pain, but I just heard like six or seven gunshots, so I just kept running. Next thing I know, I'm, I'm laying down on the floor, looking at my feet, you know, stressing about everything. If, if I'm gonna lose my toes, am I gonna be able to walk again? Am I gonna be able to work, provide for my family, box again? My biggest fear was not being able to walk again, you know, providing for my family. That was my biggest fear. Boxing, I love boxing, but that was the last thing in my mind. The only thing was in my mind, how am I gonna provide for my family if I can't walk again? It, it kind of sucks to talk about it just for the fact that, I, you know, you get flash, I get flashbacks when that happened. I just remember running away. Um, what hurt the most of being shot was not being able to pick up my little kids. When they're crying, I, I couldn't pick them up. You know, I had to sit on my ass. I had to tell them to come to me, and that's really hard when a, when your babies are crying and all they want is for you to pick them up, but you can't. <laughs> that was, uh, one of the hardest things of being shot. You know, yeah, my career, I had to put my career on hold, not being able to walk, it, that sucks. But what hurt me the most was just my kids, just them seeing me. I, my kids didn't even know the truth until a month later I told them the truth. Just because you don't want your kids to know that your father got shot. The first thing that comes to mind when someone gets shot, it's all oh, he was a bad person. He he deserved to get shot or something like that. So that's what people normally think. So if my kids, that's what they think when people get shot, someone was being bad. So it was hard for me to tell them that their father got shot for no reason, pretty much. 
person who has helped me out the most with this tough time has been my wife, for sure. She's been here since day one. In the first two weeks were actually the toughest just for the fact that I couldn't take a shower. She had to do it for me. And, um, it got embarrassing to, to some point, but I'm grateful she did it, you know. Um, when she had to wash my ass, um, it was just the craziest thing. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. It was just embarrassing, but it was funny at the same time. Cry Baby Ali is also. This, I mean, this ses setback is inspiring me to do a lot of things once I come back, you know, uh, to appreciate my job more, uh, training more, my, my sport, my family more. I mean, I have always appreciated everything I have had, but now it's, I don't know what it is, but I just can't wait to start training again. I continue on fighting. The main reason is because I want to teach my kids that they can never give up, and I want to get that in their head to never give up. And if they want to become something, they gotta keep fighting for it. I want to become a world champion, and to accomplish that, so I can show my kids, look, I want to become a world champion since I was a little kid, so I can tell them I never gave up, and look at me now, I'm a champion. Champions are not born; they're made through this fight we call life, shining brighter when the world gets darker. Jose Pepito Haro has already proven himself our champion. The willingness to keep loving, keep dreaming, keep fighting. The willingness to rise higher when he gets knocked down and show the world what it means to be a champion. How far are you willing to go? How hard are you willing to fight to reach your dreams. Now it's your turn. This is your time to shine. Gentlemen, you were given your instructions. Obey my commands. Protect yourself at all times. At the sound of the bell, your time to shine. Touch them up, fellas. Round number four for your winner by...